Everybody loves pancakes, both young and old. Because it's so easy and fun to make pancakes, everybody can make them. You can serve them with anything you like, but you can also use them in different types of dessert. I've got three suggestions for you. You can bake them in a flash and serve them with your favourite garnish, or you can use them in an impressive cake topped with red fruit. And if you're in for a culinary treat, I've got this pancake recipe with yellow pudding inside, an orange and a lovely Grand Marnier sauce on top. When there's pancakes on the table, it's a party for sure. And if I were to use my family's recipe, I would be adding this and that, odds and ends, but not here. We're using a clear recipe. I'm starting with eight eggs. which will beat with 75 grams of sugar. And then I add one liter of full cream milk. immediately followed by 50 grams of melted stalk. And to conclude, I'm adding flour. I'm using 400 grams, and here again, I'm opting for self-raising flour. You'll probably know by now, first the flour, and then add some baking powder. A coffee spoon of baking powder will do. That's about 10 grams. To our batter of egg, milk and sugar, we can now add the self-raising flour. As you can see, I started off with a liquid mass which is not frequently used when it comes to pancakes, but I found it more convenient. But that means we carefully have to sift the flour to avoid little lumps. Depending on the desired thickness of your pancakes, you add more or less. And I'm loving mine. Mmm, really thin, like a crepe, which have risen a bit thanks to the baking powder we added. And all of a sudden I find myself at my grandparents' house on a holiday with endless stacks of pancakes. And look, the last of the flour goes in. I'll give it a good stir. Yep, the consistency looks perfect. I'm letting it rest for a moment now, so the baking powder can do its job, causing little bubbles of carbon dioxide to form. And then we'll make the pancakes go and give them those little dots. As a finishing touch, you could add a little bit of vanilla, seeds from a vanilla pod, and they will give the batter these famous little black dots. And oh, just the smell. The batter for our pancakes is ready. I only need to prepare my pans. Now, part of the secret to making perfect pancakes is a good pan. And yes, I think a good pan is a non-stick pan or a cast iron pan which you never clean and which you just give a small wipe before you put it back in the cupboard. So these two are my favourite pans and they only need a fast greasing with kitchen paper like this. And I'm heating the pans thoroughly and I guess that it has to be why the first pancake always fails. Temperature of the pan. Whether I'm right, well, we might see right now. Now, the batter has risen a bit and the pans are searing hot, so I'm totally set for making pancakes. Just one spoon of batter should do to get the perfect thickness and we can see the baking powder gradually doing its work, creating these little bubbles in our pancake. I've got this little trick 
though not ideal for stainless steel stoves because of the risks of dents, to just with your pan, and you should be able to flip your pancake in one smooth gesture. And don't worry if it doesn't work the first time. And if you use a spatula, which is no disgrace, use a wooden or plastic one to protect your precious pans. And hereby we can clear up the misunderstanding that the first pancake always fails. We're set for a big stack, but it's not because the first one turned out fine that your pan doesn't need greasing anymore. Again, our ritual. Kitchen paper, a little bit of stalk, and we're off. Again, one spoonful in the pan. Spread it out nicely, and look, there's the bubbles again. Look, for me, this is what a perfect pancake looks like. Our pancakes are ready, but we're not making regular pancakes today. No, we're making a kind of pancake wrap, with filling as well as sauce, and actually loosely based on crepe Suzette. I'll be making a custard as a pancake filling, but uh, uh, the most delicious will be the orange-based sauce, which we'll add later on. There's a lot of work to be done, so I'm letting these pancakes cool, and I'll get started on the custard, which will need to cool for a moment as well. And basically, that's four egg yolks. And I'm keeping the egg whites apart to use in another recipe, or just to freeze. In the meantime, I'll put half a litre of milk on the stove with a vanilla pod in it, because it needs to be a truly fine custard. We'll make some room. Yep, that's for the dishes, except the pans, of course. Now cut a nice and thick vanilla pod lengthways and mix all the delicious black seeds into the milk, giving our custard those black spots. We'll immediately get the sugar bowl in on the act because we're going to be our egg yolks. En rouban, as the French say. Let's say about 50 grams of sugar. There it goes. And 50 grams of pudding powder. Most of the time that equals one bag. Let's get beating. Yep, until it turns pale and creamy, we know the Rubin is ready. So we can finally add the warm milk. Now we can add the hot milk to the yolk drop by drop. Start with a little bit, dissolving the yolk, and then throw in the whole lot, including the vanilla pods and I'm holding the pan in my hand because everything can go back on the stove, including the vanilla pods. And our custard can now thicken on the stove. And because this is no vanilla sauce, the custard really needs to reduce, increasing the risk of burning things. So, stay alert and keep your focus. Look at this fantastic yellow pudding. Even though it's not that much, I need to let it cool for a moment. Now pour it in. And yes, here you can leave vanilla pods in as well, 
still allowing it to spread its flavour. Now it's a matter of picking out the four most beautiful pancakes because we're really going for festive wraps. Now that's the first one. And of course, we're filling it with custard, but also with some orange segments. One segment per pancake should do because we'll use the other bits in our sauce. Not entirely cold, but rather tepid. Give the pudding a good stir and you'll immediately notice it's a firm pudding which is not too sweet. And that's exactly what we need for our pancakes. All right, a nice spoonful of it next to the orange segments. And then fold them into squares. Try and fold them in such a way that they won't unfold in the pan. That looks fine. So, fold the sides to the centre. And then, I'm making an envelope, as it were, of three parts, making sure it won't fall open later on. And if you place the pancakes on the cutting board like this, and later on in the pan, I'm absolutely confident they won't fall open. So far, so good, and the wraps are ready, but we still need to make the sauce. For the orange sauce, we're starting with a caramel. I'm using 50 grams of Solo, to which I'll add 50 grams of sugar. I'm also including the zest of an organic orange. and I'm adding the juice of the orange as well. And now, of course, keep an eye on the caramel. And just about when it starts turning golden, put in the orange juice. And that's when our pan is ready for the wraps. One in there. And back on the stove, so the pancakes can absorb the heat from the pan and crystallise a bit as well. By dousing the pancakes with our sauce, we're not only making sure the wraps are hot, we're also deliciously caramelising them with the stalk, orange and sugar syrup. We only need to scatter the remaining orange segments and then the secret ingredient, a proper splash of Grand Marnier. Which is usually accompanied by big flambe flames. Our pancake wraps are completely ready to be served. Crispy pancakes, a smooth custard filling, some orange segments on top, and a spoonful of sauce. And for the green touch, in combination with the oranges, mint is the way to go. Look at that. Fill pancakes with a custard filling, oranges and a Grand Marnier sauce. Now that's how you conclude a dinner party, if you ask me.